you got a concession here that you think, ah, oh, why would we hunt? Well, doesn't seem to make sense. Why would you hunt? How does that, how does that system work? یکیش کرد دوست ده هزار پنج فعالیت سر کرد نه که همون وقت هم اگه سی و هشت چیل تا مرخور بدار همی از همی جا تون وین وی توک دیس ایریانس ارگنیز تروفی هنتینگ ایت شود دو ایت تروفی هنگ ایت ویری گود فا کنسرویشن آن وایر لایف The system works when you take one very old animal and it pays to conserve the entire area. Today, in a little valley, we watch so many markhor that we stop counting at 70. We have protected this area 15 years, and during 15 years, population of marchor it's now became very high. It's now around 600 marchors now. is one of the greatest conservation success stories in modern time. I really feel fortunate to be a part of it and be here with these guys who, who've spent their lifetime doing this. Working on about two and a half hours of sleep, and we're excited. Hey, behind me, you got Afghanistan, right there. So we're we're right on the border. Nice little river separates the two, and I am looking up at some of the most incredible mountains this planet's got. I mean, they're just straight up. I mean, straight up, and we're gonna go sight in the rifle. And we're going to go climb this mountain. And everybody's kind of excited. So the hunt has begun. It doesn't matter if you've got two hours of sleep or eight. Rifle looks good. Let's go see if we can't just destroy our legs and turn them into jelly. <laughs> going to get ready and go hunt some markhor now. And maybe we'll even uh, connect with one here in the next, we've got almost two weeks here in Tajikistan. So we're gonna spend every ounce of that energy on connecting with the animal we came here for. Yeah, this is exciting. In Asosan, Peter Mugftagi, a Sayohi, our Syriac Yomodabut. وقتی قطعی مو سفر کردیم رای موشین ها پیاده مو یرفتیم من کاغ می زدم خواستم مرخور زن و یک مرخور نزن و بسیار در باره مرخور به مو فهمم ما نمی دونیست می جنیم استفاده می بردیم اینم برای خراکه می زدیم شکار می کردیم وقتی باید فهمون که این ایخل چیز این دردنی و باقر دست همی را فهمون مو رو بعد همین بعد فهمیدیم که خوجگی و شکاری به دست همی خیلی جیش کنیم مو رو فهم بعد در ایان رفتیم turn our backs on the Afghan mountains. We're gonna head up into the Tajik side. Obviously the hunting's done on the Tajik side. We're leaving our 
base camp. We've got sleeping bags, some bottles of water. We're just gonna keep going up until it gets dark or we see Markor, whichever comes first. If darkness comes first, we'll spend the night on the mountain. Uh, we've got enough for two days. This is a uh, hunt of a lifetime and can't wait to get going. My name is Ayub. I am 43 years old. I am director of MSIOT Conservancy. We are protect the wild animals, Marhor, Ibex, Bea, Snow Leopard. As you know, we have in our area such animals. When we took this area, uh, there was around 40, 50 marchors. It's uh, female and male. And when Soviet Union broken, and as you know, we have a civil war, and uh, nobody protect here, and many poachers was there. Marchor, as I said, as I now at Interavarte, that the Soviet poach for the bigger way, the Arab side of the world is the same. I think it's for the Afghan exaction is the other side of the world is the same. سال 2004 این طرف با تمام نیستید که امین بعد فهمیدیم که خوجگی و شکاری به دست همی خیلی جیش کاز ما این مورا فهم بعد در ایران رفتیم وای کردیم امینجا یک خواستیم خوجگی شکاری کنیم لیکن اون سالا نشد خوجگی شکاری کردن بعد نیکی از همون وقت شکار من, من کردم من یک شکاری شوی هم بدم ده نیکی از همون سال نوید یک وقتی که اون مردک اومد همه پیتر مورا فهم همه مسئله را انا از همون وقت من قطعی هم دیگه شکاری مورا خود کردم. با چند سال با پس با شکاری رنگ هم این ایبکس هم باز کردم همین قطعی بعد سال ده هزار خیلی بسیار بای کردیم نشد کارو بعد ده هزار چارم یک مکتوب با پریزیدن نوشتم مکتوب دستگیری کرده شد بعد پس همون خوشگی شکار ده هزار پنج فعالیت سر کرد نیکه همون وقتا همگی سی و هشت چیل تا مرخور به درمی از همین جا تا it's, it's shown during some years, so it's a trophy hang is very good for, for conservation of wildlife. We are protected this area around 15 years. And during 15 years, population of Marhor, it's now became very high. It's now around 600 Marhors now. So we just got to spot camp about an hour ago. Got a few things unpacked. Half of our view is taken up by the mountains on the Afghan side of the border. They just, they're so big, you just can't get away from them. But I still got a few more things to put away. Some gear to get sorted out. I'm here with Eldar. Eldar works for the hunting consortium I booked this hunt through. They do a great job. Eldar met us at the airport. I'm happy to have him here uh, and the rest of the team around us. We've got four guys up here with us now. So we'll probably be here for the rest of the day. In the night, sleep here. Get up, start working tomorrow morning, work our way up that mountain behind me here. This is a good stopping point, though. We're going to hope that my snoring doesn't scare off the markhor. Uh, I mean, it's a conservation area, but it's not meant to have freight train noises running through it. So we got a couple of nice tents. 
nice little teapot, little cooking area. This is our, this is really nice. I like this. The toilet paper roll right here. A couple of the guys went up this hill here a little bit and grab a little firewood for tonight, make dinner. Uh, it's a nice little spike camp they've got set up here. I found this on the way up. The first time I saw this, I thought, hey, what is this doing here? This is a porcupine quill. It's always cool to find something that shows you that there's other animals around, especially ones you didn't know were here. I didn't know they had a porcupine here that had quills like that. Who knows, maybe if we get lucky, we'll see one on this trip. I'd, I'd really like that. This area used to have a lot of snow leopards in it and a lot of markhor in it. And, you know, human beings have gotten a little bit more advanced in their ability to gather food. And one of those food sources has been this markhor. Unfortunately, as the markhor populations declined, uh, so did the populations of snow leopards. Uh, markhor uh, and the ibex are a major food source for the snow leopard. So the conservation efforts here they not only put money back into the community, but it also keeps the land from, from being overhunted. Uh, and so you've seen a real rebound in the Markhor population, the Ibex population, and because of that, you've also seen a rebound in the, in the snow leopard population in these areas where good wildlife management is taking place and good conservation is taking place and you've got hunting dollars, quite a bit of hunting dollars supporting that effort. Hopefully we can keep it this way as long as possible. But if we keep doing it this way, taking only really old animals, being thoughtful from a scientific standpoint on what we take, when we take it, and how we take it, and keeping, uh, keeping things in a little bit better balance than they have been kept in the last 50 years or so, then we're really going to see, see places like this continue to thrive and see the populations of all these animals increase uh, year after year. So. Uh, a young markhor. He's not. He only has about two curls on. Him. But we're really looking for the granddaddies. These guys, ones we saw earlier, maybe two, three years old, and maybe a four or five year old. This is also pretty young. And as soon as he's here, he's gone. So. So we saw that Medesian Ibex, like two of them, really nice ones. And uh, there's some markers coming down from, from that side of the mountain, like three of them in one spot here and one male. And in the morning that male was with that big markor which we're looking for. So now he's by himself only, so maybe we'll see his friend. <laughs> start unrolling some sleeping pads here. Uh, sun's gone down. It's, uh, it gets cold quick here in the mountains. That's no surprise. So our plan tomorrow is to wake up for the sun and have a look at this mountain here and see what we see. If we don't see anything, I think we'll, we'll probably move. And just try and figure it out one step at a time. Get a good night's sleep. Feel like kings in the morning. Okay, that's uh, rolled on, we call it like fast preparing noodles. When you put the hot water, wait for a couple minutes. Tell you what, reminds me of uh, college all over again. Some ramen noodles and some rewarmed up bread that looks suspiciously like a giant pizza torn in half without any sauce on it. 
This is, I feel 20 years younger. <laughs> nah, it's gonna be great. It's hot food on a mountainside. We started out this morning, we're headed up. I'm about an hour into the day. Hike's been mostly it's like slight uphill following this canyon. But uh, now we gotta get on top of the canyon because there's a waterfall in front of us. So in order to do that, we're basically gonna go straight up here. So we're, everybody's taking a little break, getting a little bit of water. And then we're gonna go straight up the side of this canyon. And yeah, it should be interesting. Um, we can see Marcor area all around us. I mean, we feel like we're in like this massive canyon right now. I, it's just, the mountains are so high, it's incredible. We'll be up on top before we know it. You know, what's, what's three hours of hiking as opposed to, you know, being on top of the world for two days? This is gonna be so cool. camp we're in the same same concession but on the other side of the canyon we were in yesterday it's a nice hike took us we, we moved pretty well so only took us two and a half hours but it's straight up we've got a little shepherd's cabin to sleep in tonight there's rug on the floor and we've got a couple sleeping bags nice little rock building here and keep us out of the wind and it's actually quite nice. I'd almost rather have this than a tent. This is really pretty country. I cannot wait for tomorrow. I'm I'm so looking forward to being up in even higher mountains than what we're sitting in. I mean, it's just we're in a cathedral of stone. It's incredible. Oh, there's a brown bear. Oh, cool. So we're gonna have a look at a brown bear that's up here on the side of the hill. He's right up where we're headed, so we'll have a look at that real quick. Well, I knew there were brown bears here. I was just surprised to see one this late in the year. Usually you see brown bears earlier in the fall, but by now they're usually going to bed, so I haven't been able to see them pretty cool. So apparently there's enough food for these brown bears up on this mountainside that they don't mess with the domestic animals. They don't mess with the cows. They don't mess with the sheep. They don't mess with anything, which I find just completely incredible. I mean, we are really in a paradise of good food and clean water for wild animals. I feel very fortunate to see it.
first thing this morning down at Spike Camp, we saw only Ibex. And we came up here. And we're just at a good spotting location. And we're seeing a lot of markhor. Uh, brought my rifle with me today, so the plan is to find the markhor <laughs> that we're looking for in the hope that he comes closer towards us. Because right now he's on the other side of, well, an impassable canyon. Not impassable for them, impassable for us. And we're gonna hope they come down off of there, down into this canyon. This big old boy, he's he's heading downhill right now. He's about almost two kilometers away, and we're watching him, and it's cool. I, I just love it. So we'll um, we'll go downhill here in a, a little bit once we lose the rest of this light. Have a little dinner, make a plan. See what we do tomorrow. That's all we can do. All right, we saw Markor this evening that, uh, Looks like a pretty big one. And he's about two mountains away from where we are. So we've got to go climb back up that mountain where we were today. And finish climbing it, go down the other side, up the next one, down that one, and up the next one, and then just kind of side alone around it and to come down the face of it, see if we can get on top of him. Uh, so we're gonna leave it 1 a.m. in the morning. That's when the moon gets up and we'll head up that mountain in the dark. Right now, I am just putting rangefinder cheat sheet for yardage that I made for my rifle in the pocket that it belongs in so I don't look for it. Pocket knife in the other pocket it belongs in. We 
think? Man, I, this is hard to say from here, but I don't think he's the shooter we are looking for for several days. You see that he, he doesn't quite go three twists, does he? Yeah, although I think that's the right call. There he goes up the mountain anyways. He's, he's getting there. He's not quite as old as what we'd like. Very smart, Markor, that's for sure. Very smart, he's been outwitting us for a couple of days now. First day back in the field, we've taken three days off because it snowed so badly and it's been pretty nasty up here. The snow has brought the Markor down off the highest peaks, which is nice. Normally we have to go about two hours uphill and now we only, we don't have to go nearly as far. The Markor have come down. We think there's a pretty big one up there, but it's getting late. So we'll just watch him for a little bit, see where he goes to bed, come back in here in the morning with better light and uh, make a plan, see if we can't get up in this canyon. It's gonna be a, gonna be a little bit of a hump, but not nearly as bad as before, but we'll see. climbing a mountain. This is a mountain we've climbed before, so uh, in some ways that's nice. Uh, we get to use headlamps, which is a, a total plus. This big markor that we've been looking for for, oh gosh, what is this? Well, this is day nine, yeah, day nine. The snow has really helped bring everything down. I mean, it screwed us from a hunting perspective. We couldn't hunt for three days. It did bring them a little closer to us, so when you're mountain hunting, if, if you can get the animal to come down to you a little more, you're not gonna complain because there's going to be plenty of days where the animal just goes away from you and up and you've got to hike twice as far. So just go have a look. We spent the morning climbing up here in the dark. But the mark over here, we're just waiting for the big one to come out. He's probably just biding his time, taking a little nap, conserving his energy. اساس این پاپولیت زیاد کردن همین مبلغ ای که ما توانستیم که مثلا اول یک چور پنج کس بعد ده کس این همه قدر خوزی قدر کارگر شما شویدیم دیده چی قدر کارگر داریم ما این کارگرهای ما هست مثال که زیاد هستن انا که از همین سبب همین ای که زیاد شده این زیاد شدن مرخور بسیار آسان ای برای اینکه از اکثریت ای نوادون فویز مرخور دو تای میزویا دو تا میزویا بعد فقط نگاه بین برای کنی سر وای کردن بر هم دادن نگاه بین کردن. امی آدمو تیور بوشن دویم در هر جا کی خیلی دیدی خود در این ماشین میگردن. بزی ما یا سبب اونه کی چی پرونی نیست؟ شکاری غیر قانون دیگر اون کی نیست؟ بزی دیدی نمیگردن. این میره پیش میبینه چی؟ این سبب چیه؟ خیلی ولی شما بگرده دیگر جا خیلی خود گشته که میدونی. مثال کی چیل ای جونا میگردن؟ امی سبب اینه کی امو مبلغ اگر نمیشه ما چیل امی دارن نگاه میکنن. خوزی رامی نمین اگر امی موجود ما اگر امی یک دش کردن شود خودا ما مشکل نیگو گرفت میتونی مجبور استیم که اما اساسش همون شکار است که امی زیاد شدن یا امین اساسش همون مبلغه. Before the people don't understand about trophy hunting, you know, when we start, you know, we took this area as official 15 years ago. Only in 2012 or 13, it's official open hunt on Marchal. 
every year we spend some money in local community and from our income we spend around 20-30% in local community. And now the people understood that Trophy Han is uh, good for them. And every year in our village, in another village, we build houses and we have the schools and the medical, or we ask them what's the problem in village. You know, they ask us and we help. Now the people, local people, you know, understood it and, uh, and now it's good for us. Day 10, it's snowing again, being November, up there on the hillside. I call it a hillside, but it's really more of just a cliff face. Just started calling them hills just to make myself mentally feel better about having to climb them. Calling them a cliff face would just do a disservice to my knees and my legs. We're looking at a few more markor this morning. Some more have come down. Basically today is gonna be, let's, Let's see a few things, keep an eye on things from down here. It's not gonna be safe to be up there. The rock around us is pretty slick and you need completely dry weather. Snowing up on top, looks like we'll probably get a little rain down here at the bottom or snow. Temperature feels like snow. <laughs> We're back here at the spot where we were yesterday evening looking at what we believe to be the, the Markor. We wanted to get a better look at him in better light and he's decided to go further up the mountain, just walked over the ridge. So I think it's now time to just put on another layer and find a nice rock to sleep on until he comes back this way. Because that's, that's about all we can do. We're down here at a, a new spot. I haven't been here before. So it's a good area to sit in glass. You've got a big bowl here, a big wide open bowl to look at on this cliff face. We've located a large group of markhor, well over a hundred. Uh, the rut has really begun and there's one, one big billy in there that we think not only has potential but has enough potential for us to make probably one of the, the nuttier climbs I've ever attempted. Just to get to the hard part is a two hour cliff hanger. As the locals here say, it's a little bit dangerous, which basically means it's, well, they're gonna bring rope, whatever that means. That cliff has to be traversed and there's no path. So there's some bits of wood up there. So 
Yeah, this is safe. Just not what I'm used to doing. It's going to be interesting. There's at least 100 markor up there. Again, this is one little area. If I look, and that's just that section of this bowl. If I look over there, there's another 70. If I look up here, there's 50 to 80 markor sitting up behind us. I mean, this is one of the greatest conservation success stories in modern times. I really feel fortunate to be a part of it and be here with these guys who, who've spent their lifetime doing this. There's financial compensation for them, but I think the original impetus for them to do this was to have their mountains full of mark horror again. And they figured the best way to do it was to monetize it. it seems to have worked very well. Spend the rest of the day watching him. And then tomorrow, first thing in the dark tomorrow morning, which I won't mind because then I won't be able to see how high up we are and that'll be fine by me. And uh, crawl across that mountain face like spiders. I'm excited. And it's uh, a big cliff. And it's a big markhor. Got up at three this morning. Had a nice breakfast and uh, drove here to the side of this, what I'm now calling Murder Mountain. Mostly because it's murdered every ounce of my courage. It's the scariest thing I've ever done. Uh, and the worst part isn't over because we did all of that in the darkness. And we have to go back in daylight. Um, we've got some good guys here. <laughs> they, they roped me up. <laughs> uh, I'm just glad I didn't cry. Uh, it's, it's scary. I really hate heights. We're doing okay. We're doing okay, we're here now. Got a big markhor in front of us. Uh, he's in a big group. We're gonna try and pull a sneaky sneak on him. Waiting for the main man Eldar here. If we don't all come up the mountain together, we do a little bit at a time so nobody gets hurt. And uh, we'll be off soon. Yeah, there we go. Now we're having a conversation. Give them to me way out. Is he still headed up that slope?
He was in that tree. I got him. He's standing still. Now he's moving. All right, I got him. Range him. Five seven zero. You, man, but it's so dangerous here. Right? Eldar, I'm holding on to a tree because I don't... Yeah, can, can we get me to a tree where it's safe? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. We connected on the Markor that we saw yesterday. He's done. He's way over there, and we're gonna work our work on getting him back over here. continued efforts of these hunting concessions through best use land practices, it can have an incredible long-term beneficial effect on keeping wildlands wild and helping to create a balance between people being able to live here and animals being able to live here. I mean, that's, that's what we've got to create. I mean, it can't just all be about the animals and it can't just all be about the people. It won't work that way. But here you're seeing a balance. Yeah, she's got any or I'm gonna be so her sandem key in Marda as America Bang your scorum the gay, score hoop card as a mean job so yak has a road hoop catimero. Unicorns here? Oh, cool. I want to see unicorn. Action. I hate action. It's time to go. I'm handing him out some earplugs, and we're going to hope that my snoring doesn't scare off the markor. Uh, I mean, it's a conservation area, but it's not meant to have 
epileptic freight train noises running through it, so. Asking, so can, Anna, can you take that mic, please? No. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Uh, what are we doing tomorrow? Same. What we did today. <laughs> <laughs> Every day is the same day. <laughs> no, seriously, just uh, can can I stand there so you don't see my cold sore, oh please? My God. <laughs> can we get his good side? <laughs> can we get his good side, yeah. please? Much better. Yeah. Oh, it's his my good side. My biceps is here. My okay. much bigger. Yes. Okay. Right, what's the plan for Can you moment? take that, the <laughs> <laughs> please? Okay. Okay. <laughs> everybody, get serious. Well, currently we're watching uh, Border Protection Agent uh, Eldar. He is uh, in the process of policing the Afghan border. He looks amazing. You should get a really, he's obviously been working at it very hard for a long time. One, two, what is this? Uh, this is us on the side of a, what we're calling murder mountain. It's murder on the legs, murder on your confidence, uh, murder on your underwear, murder on the people behind you after you've murdered your underwear. <laughs> 